Welcome to Business Influencers. Hope everyone's having a wonderful week. Again, Business Influencers, we are on fire here, and it's all because of you. And our show is committed to your personal success as each and every week we bring in guests that share their words of wisdom, insights, and most importantly, their experience to help you take what, what it means to you to move you and your business in, uh, forward. Business Influencers is all about how we think to be, to become, to do, and have different and better results. And we want to thank you, listeners from that have joined us since the beginning to where we are today, that our, our commitment is to you and your success. Today's show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. Alumni Direct is a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing together alumni, but not only people that you went to school with, perhaps you can now meet people that were you didn't go to you you know you didn't go to school with at the time. These could be people from other generations. A great way to generate authentic, genuine relationships that will allow you to move your personal life and maybe your business forward. You might land your next job, your next business venture, or find your next business partner. Check them out at alumnidirect.com. They offer a wide variety of affinity membership programs as well. And again, that's alumnidirect.com. Well, we got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about how our words are the GPS to our outcome. And I really love this because I think words are powerful. They are energy. And we have the privilege of being with Bruce Pulver. And Bruce is a TEDx speaker, author, and act actual national leader. But let me give you a more thorough background about Bruce before we formally bring him on. He's a highly sought after international TEDx speaker and an author which started out as a single word of inspiration after a life-changing BAM moment has grown into so much more. From writing an inspirational book, delivering an empowering TEDx talk, and launching the massively successful Word Shop program that teaches high-performing executives and organizations skills to maximize results by leveraging the power of their words. Bruce is also a seasoned sales executive who has earned multiple sales performance awards and driven over 100 million in new sales during his career. His best-selling book, Above the Chatter, Our Words Matter, Powerful Words That Change My Life Forever, is the foundation of his captivating keynotes and innovative word, word shop programs. His work delivers an immediate and lasting impact on the lives that he touches. I could keep going on, but without further ado, we welcome Bruce Pulver to the show. Bruce, how are you doing today? I'm terrific. Thank you so much for that great introduction. I appreciate it. And, and, and thanks. Yeah. You know, when it gets read, it's like, wow, no, that can't be me. You're talking about somebody else, but uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of every opportunity and, you know, including the setbacks, you know, that have caused, you know, me to kind of look at things and dial into the GPS and, you know, look at my mindset and my words to drive my outcomes. That's all. I, I love it. And let's talk about that because, you know, let's. Go, I know there's a backstory, and let's talk about that. About what got you into really looking at words and how they can really reshape and and revamp where we are in our businesses, our personal lives, to whatever that success means to an individual or organization. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think we all have events in our lives that impact us and and sort of change the trajectory of where we are. I call them BAM moments, like all of a sudden, BAM. And it could be a, an uplift, you know, or it can be a setback, right? It, it, it doesn't have a, um, a prejudice to that, right? In, in my case, it was, it was a setback. It was a, it was a layoff. It was actually the second layoff in my career. And the only thing that was the same in that layoff one to layoff two was me. I was the only thing that was the same. So, you know, all the doubt, anger, disappointment, setback, you know, you know, self-doubt, all that stuff was my bam moment. And what I learned in that process was I can look at that situation one of two ways. It could launch me or it could bury me. And the only person that had the sort of the control of that aspect was me also. I couldn't handle you know, or, or change the decisions. I couldn't change the reorg, the downsizing, all the things. But what I sort of focused on, and this was based on my upbringing in a very positive family that was very grateful. We'll talk about that if we have time. Sure. But that was really the launching point. Right there was it. It was you have you have to do something. And then the next morning, quite I mean, literally the next morning, 
I woke up and pounding in my word was a single word. A sign in my head was a single word. And that word was, Bruce, you have to be strong. S-T-R-O-N-G, wrote mm -hmm. it vertically and seriously within a matter of a minute. I took those letters and defined the word by saying, stand tall, remain optimistic, now go for it. My way of looking at what strong needed to mean that day, and it sort of blossomed. Yeah. And it sort of put me on the track of, okay, you gotta be strong, now just go do something. Yeah. To feel like you're strong. Yeah. Uh, well, what I love about what you, with that, that kind of that epiphany when you, when that word came to you and then you were able to, you know, you know, use it as an acronym and break it down to what, what where you were at that time. I, I, I hear resiliency, right? So, you know, you said, that, you know, I have to be resilient in this moment moving forward. You know, I can, I have a choice. I could either, you know, you know, sit and stew about why this happened, why I got laid off, or I can do something whatever I can in this moment within my control and just move forward and trust that something is going to, you know, be good that will, will, will evolve from, you know, me, you know, being resilient in this, in this, in this mode. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, part of it, quite honestly, you know, my, my faith, my upbringing said, you know, just, just stay on the path. You know, you're, you're, you're not on this, you're not in this alone. It doesn't, define who you are life happens for you not to you those Love sort of it. things just started started sort of bubbling up and and helping me take that next step yeah i love that when you said you know that life is happening for me not to me sometimes we we think that oh my god you know i've you know i've lost a job and you know you know I, my income now is going to disappear or my benefits are going to disappear and we kind of get caught up in Oh my God! You know, money and you know, and 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 protection and benefits, but we're not seeing that. What are what are the new possibilities that that lie before you know that are ahead of us? That if we just now focus our attention there, yeah, it might be a little rough in the beginning, but where where can this possibly take us? Absolutely. And, and it's, I guess it's a a different way of thinking. Yeah, and let's just sort of put a little caveat here. Yeah, this wasn't a light switch. This wasn't the oh, next yeah. day. It was awesome. So what, what you said about sort of, oh, my goodness, all the things, you know, you mentioned them all. You did a nice list of the things that went through my head. You may have been in my head that day. But income, <laughs> benefits, I've been, well, the these, thing is, because I've been there where, where you've been. I know exactly from personal experience. <laughs> yeah. So what I always say is I'm a, I'm a mouse in my own laboratory. So as we talk through these things over the next few minutes, please know that <clears throat> I don't have all this stuff figured out, but I've found that staying on this kind of path, my results are definitely much more positive than if I were to go the other way. Ah, I love it. Talk about like, again, you know, from that day, like when you made, you know, when that word strong, you know, really, you know, it's stuck in your head for, you know, obviously, and, you know, became an acronym and it came to like a, a basis point for what you do today in your, your word shop programs Talk about like if somebody were in your shoes right now, or if you have a business that, you know, for some reason it just, you know, things have gone south as a result of COVID or something happened in their industry, or maybe their, their, uh, you know, something has become obsolete in their business and they haven't, you know, really revamped it, you know, or, to, you know, to kind of make changes at this point. Talk about that. If you could talk about what are some of the things you can suggest to someone? Yeah, first and foremost, man, everyone that's running their own business, whether it's an entrepreneurial thing or a partnership or, you know, a restaurant owner or a consultant, whoever, you know, we're all feeling that, right? So this is a universal conversation. I hope everyone can take something that fits them. So I'm going to kind of be general, but try to plug this in. So, <clears throat> you know, we're all facing change, right? And the way that the words help me is you can look at change two ways. Let's write them vertically and look at one side versus the other, okay? Change can be, again, written vertically, can't handle another negative gut-wrenching experience. That's one way to look at change. Oh, man, not another regulation, not another imposement, not another set, you know, labor struggle. Oh, not again, not again, not again. I can't handle another one. And this doesn't fix it but it just changes the lens a little bit. If you write the word change vertically and you say, circumstances have altered, now get engaged. I mean, it doesn't do anything except maybe gets you out of the block. 
Yeah. Get you out of the blocks, get you on the track. Another way to look at change, because that's kind of what we're talking about, is another way to look at the same word. So how do I embrace a change besides Bruce's little taglines there? Let's look at it another way, like actively, because yeah, words are one thing, but giving folks something they can activate is to me more powerful. That's that GPS. That's the coordinates to getting where we want to go. So let's look at change another way. To change, we need to challenge disruptively. That's the C. Mm. We need to help endlessly. I think that if we're going through something that's difficult and we can find a way to serve someone else through the pain, man, that just changes the whole outlook because it's not just us. We're looking to elevate. I mean, say you want to get fit. Why not take a plastic bag with you and pick up as many aluminum cans as you see? You're going to walk further and you're going to leave the environment better. Just a simple example about the H in change of help endlessly. Yeah. This, the A then is act compassionately. I mean, you know, when you're going through a change, you're not the only one going through it. So maybe that person sitting next to you on the bus or, or you know, in the airport getting ready to go to that interview, you know, just they may be going through the same thing as you are. So if you approach a change by acting compassionately towards yourself and towards others, especially towards family, I think that helps us let go some of that steam, right? The N is, man, we got to navigate pragmatically. We are in this situation, but we have so many positive experiences that we can pick on. I call it, or, or uh, David Goggins calls it, go into your cookie jar, right? If you've read <laughs> the book, you can't hurt me. Go in and, 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 and navigate pragmatically using what you've, what's worked for you in the past or what hasn't changed it, right? So that's the end. The G is, man, we got to get after it tenaciously, right? We don't quit when we're tired, we quit when we're done. Just got to be tenacious and just say, nothing's going to beat me here. And then the E is engage passionately, right? You got to find the thing that, that really makes you obsessed about your passion and just engage passionately with that. So that, again, three different ways to look at the word change, but that's kind of what we, we, we talked well, about. I love it. I love it. And you make it so, you know, like it, you, it's so simple. I'm not saying that the process is simple because that's not the case. But, but, but how you illustrate it and how you convey it that somebody can understand it. And now that it's up to them to now own that and actually do something with it. I, I, I love it. What would be some of the things that you would suggest, you know, uh, in addition to what you just shared about, about this process that people can move from where they are, where they desire to be? Again, they're not going to have all the answers. They're not going to have all the information. Yeah. But trusting that process of the things that they could continue to do, whether it's an individual or a business to move towards something better. Yeah, wow. So, so one of my other favorite words, and I'm not gonna do this as an acrostic, is, <laughs> is, the, word, is the word action. So, uh, you know, my, my faith tells me that God likes to hit moving targets. So if we're moving towards something that is, you know, towards our goal, towards our mission, towards our passion, you know, we can get moved miraculously in ways we never would believe. But the one word I love is the word action. So taking action. The thing I love about that word is that the fourth letter is I. Yeah. The first three letters are act, right? The last two letters are on. I act on something. Yeah. So you, you had said that earlier that, that it could be really difficult to just stew and sit there. And, but I get that. That's like the that's the part of the emotion that you want to break something, right? You want to put yeah. a hand through a wall or something <laughs> and that's okay. But I think taking a step, um, even if you don't know how you're going to get there yet, moving in the direction that, that you believe is going to improve the situation is, is I would say the, the best thing. And I do have another, another acrostic for one of my favorite phrases that you start anything, especially if you have no knowledge about it, Maybe, maybe you're ending, maybe you've closed the restaurant or the insurance business is you're going to, you know, let that go or do something and you're, oh my God, and you can try something completely new. Like I'm going to reinvent myself now. I'm going to do something completely different. If you start with the three words, yes, I can, it changes everything versus mm -hmm. I don't know how, or maybe, but you start with yes, I can, which means you expect success in challenging activities now. It gets the conversation changed, that GPS changed from a mindset of limitation 
to a mindset of abundance, even yeah. if you're not there yet. I know it sometimes it sounds like Pollyanna and Bruce, you got these crazy. Woo -woo -woo no, not at all. We, we, we here at business influencers, we agree a hundred percent. It, you know, cause again, like when you say those words, you're, you're like, I can, yes, I can. You're thinking that and you, and you got to believe that you can. So when you're thinking that, and then you say it, that's going to allow you to be it to the become it and then to do it. And then the results will be the byproduct of what, you know, all of those things that you're doing as a result of what you've been thinking and what you, what you're saying to yourself and other people. Yeah. So, and I truly think our trigger is our thoughts because mm -hmm. then that, that, that leads to our beliefs, what we think we believe, you know, what we believe then, then set our intentions, which then lead our actions and ultimately our outcomes. So to me, the trigger is very, very careful. We've got to set those GPS coordinates. We wouldn't think about driving from across town without having whatever our GPS of choice app is anymore. So we, why would we try to get to a destination without at least starting with some positive coordinates as to the direction we want to go? Yeah, that's so true. So, so true. And I think, uh, you know, it's powerful what you just shared. Uh, you know, here, you know, with the listeners and those that will be listening here later or whenever we have people that tune into these, you know, every day, every week, every month. So uh, you got a lot of, lot of great longevity with the, what you're sharing here with, uh, with our show today. What would you say, like, again, would be, you know, it, you know, somebody that's just hearing this for the first time, like our words are the GPS to our outcomes yeah. You've shared a lot, you know, some of the process of what, you know, what, where to start, what, you know, what kind of what, where you can, what some ideas, what they can do to do that. But what would be some of the things like how they should go into looking at this? Because again, they're in a bad place right now. They're not trusting the universe or their yeah. whatever, what's happening. Kind of like, do they surrender in the moment? If you could discuss that a little bit, you know. Wow. Yeah. So everyone's at a different place in their walk, right? Everyone is in their right in life and in, in where their mindset is one thing that really has helped me and continues to is to establish a solid morning routine mm. okay so let's say that you're downsized or furloughed or your company's you know you're not open right now um commit to a routine that works for you that you do every day and here's one that that has really helped me it, it's five it's five simple steps um, and you're going to laugh at me at a couple of them, but some of them are, uh, I mean, every one of them has helped me. Number one, uh, no snooze button. So if you set it for eight o'clock, you're up at eight or seven 59. If you set it for five, you get up at five, you control it, but move when the alarm goes off, set it, get going. Right. So number one is get your day going immediately. Right. Number one, number two, no technology for the first hour. If you can, yeah, no, email, no social media, nothing, because that is what invades the clear mind that you wake up with. So, so what do you, so do something else with that time. Number one would be to move, do, do some sort of physical movement. It's whatever your level is. And it's not a judge. I mean, if you just want to do five jumping jacks or walk in place for 30 seconds, fine. If you have a mile walk or run, you're going to do, do some sort of movement every day. Right. So we've said, we've said no snooze, um, no technology, uh, move, write down your goals, Equally as important is write down five things you're grateful for this morning. Mm. And it could be anything. The roof's not linking. <laughs> I got a glass of water next to me. Um, it, could, it could be it, but, but write those things down because it's hard to be in a tough place when you're grateful. Yeah, and that's so true. I love, I, love, I love the power of a daily routine. And you said, you know, again, like, you know, maybe it's getting up an hour earlier, not allowing, you know, like, you know, people to distract you or technology. That's your time, your time to get clarity and get focus and, and, and then, you know, map out like within what, you know, what you're going to work on that day. And I love the physical activity and, you know, all of that, because that really helps. I know for me, working out helps me to, you know, just get, get more clarity. Like I'm just in the moment, I'm in that workout. And uh, I, I, I agree. So, so hundred percent with what you said, daily routine is so important. And the, the last item, and you're going to go, really, is, and you had mentioned this with one of the sponsors of the Alumni Connection, right? Send 
a, an encouraging message some way, text, email, phone call, send an encouraging message to someone else because you don't know what they're going through. And trust me, it's going to help you when you get a message back that says, thanks for thinking of me. It starts to turn the wheel to where we want it to be because it's not overnight, but a morning routine with those items and then just starting to think about possibilities, not limitations, abundance, not scarcity. As hard as that is, man, that's to me, that's the way to break through no matter how long it takes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And would, would it be safe to say like when this daily routine that there, you know, because in the beginning, if you don't have a daily routine, there, there's going to be, you're going to need some discipline and yeah. there's and the consistency factor is going to obviously be important. Would that be correct? Oh, hundred percent. So uh, the, the study typically says 30 days to form a habit or 21 days to form a habit. If you can do this morning routine for 67 days in a row, it will be harder to not do it, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. than to do it. Um, and because you will be seeing things that are paying dividends to you. So, so absolutely. The simple thing too about, let's say you do want to focus on fitness and you haven't done anything and that's fine. But if you put the shoes at the end of the bed the night before, you got to walk by them not to do the walk, right? You have to actually look at them and say, mm. so put them there. And that'll help you start thinking about making that extra 30 minutes, making that extra 10 minutes, even if it's at five minutes, walk up the, the hill and back or shovel some snow or whatever it is you need to do. Um, to me, it gets it going. And, and if you can have an accountability partner with you, and one of the best accountability partners is your phone, set an appointment with yourself that says, now breathe for five minutes. And it goes off, the alarm goes off and you take that five minutes and you breathe. Or you stand up and you, you, you make something, you make this technology be your friend and help you be accountable. I, I love that what you said about accountability because I know for me, when I made a shift about 23 years ago, I didn't have a daily routine at the time. I didn't have structure. I didn't have any accountability. So all of that was foreign to me. And, when I, and, and now today, flash forward, that's all part of my daily life, daily routine, you know, accountability. And, you know, an accountability can be in a lot of different forms. Like you said, you, you know, using the technology, it can mean having an accountability partner, a group, uh, something that whatever works for you. If you could expand on that for about a minute or so, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, social media can be your friend, right? You, there are groups that will do, help you do these things, right? Get in a, get, so I truly believe that the five people we surround ourselves with really control a lot of our direction around mindset, attitude, actions, et cetera. So, you know, look for someone that's going to stretch you because, you know, and I know we have to, and we want to get, no, nobody's rowing the boats for us. we got to row the boats ourselves. And at whatever level you step in, there's one thing that you can commit. And I'll wrap here. Committing is count on me making it there. C-O-M-M-I-T, right? But we've got to commit to the commitment for it to stick. For example, I might say to you, you know what? I joined the Y and I'm going to start swimming three mornings a week. Let's go celebrate that and have a beer about it. And I might never get in the pool. So I've committed. I've said it. I've celebrated what I've committed, but I've not committed to the commitment yet. I've not pulled in the driveway at six o'clock of the YMCA or whatever that is after yes. work, not lunchtime, and actually <laughs> done a lap or even gotten in the water. And it doesn't matter how far you go. It doesn't matter the distance. It doesn't matter the intensity. Consistency over intensity always wins. Yeah. So it's commitment to the commitment, which to me is such a lesson that I really learn and continue to have to practice, right? It's easy to start something and then to add. But we can go on a lot about my little mind games I do around those <laughs> things, but uh, that's why I'd encourage someone. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, this has been powerful what you've shared here, Bruce. I mean, I, I, I could keep talking with you about this because it, it, it's, this is so powerful and I love what you're doing here to help, you know, individuals and businesses move ahead with, you know, the power of our words being the GPS that lead to our outcomes. I would, you know, I would love for you to share a little bit about, about you uh, for the next minute or two and, you know, what you're up to and how people can get in contact with you to learn more about the, the word shop programs and other things that you're doing to help individuals and businesses. 
Well, sure. And thank you again. I, you know, my goal is if, if we, if we clicked with one person out there driving from a point A to point B and it gave them a nugget, we, we, we definitely had met a goal today. So thank you for that. So I'm doing a lot of speaking virtual. And as they're opening up a lot more in person are starting to come again, um, doing keynotes and what I call a word shop, which is more of a group event to help develop, you know, group goals and group think around using the power of our words. Um, I can be reached at my website above the chatter, ourwordsmatter.com. Just get my book. You can reach out to me. I post on my social every day on LinkedIn, uh, Bruce Pulver, as well as above the chatter, Bruce Pulver on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, the real thing right now is just helping folks find some hope. And that's really what I needed. And I got this gift of words being downloaded to me for 400 and some odd days, which created this book. And it's really, it's really changed the trajectory of my life to just try to help folks. So that's the best way to reach out to me is website, above the chatter, our words matter. Com. Wow. Powerful. And we highly encourage everybody listening to reach out to Bruce, get to know him and everything that he's doing. Again, this is someone that, that really embraces this process from his own personal experience and, and in allowing you to help yourself do the same in court and again, your business as well. So feel free to reach out to Bruce. We highly encourage and highly recommend him. And again, thank you listeners for being here each and every week, the Business Influencer Way. We are committed to bringing in people like Bruce each and every week, again, to share their insights, wisdom, and their personal experiences to help move you and your business forward. We'll be back next week at the same time. So everyone have a great rest of your week and we'll see you then. Have a great day, everyone.